Hey, on the latest episode of Hack My Growth, we're gonna be looking at how we can influence our site links within the Google search results. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. If this is your first time watching or maybe been watching a while and you have not yet joined our community, please do so now. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell, that way you know each and every time we create new content. All right, let's go. All right, so let's take a look at how we can influence or get site links to appear within the Google search results. So what are site links? Site links are uh, links that actually show up underneath your main URL. As you can see here to the right, we've got a few uh, examples here and two different ways that they can be shown. Uh, the first is from HubSpot, and you can see they've got the, the site link search, which is part of structured data. So you can add structured data to add that. But the links below that, like the free CRM software, careers, those sort of links are called site links. And these are things that, that Google actually analyzes the structure of your website to find shortcuts that are, they believe will help save users time and allow them to find the information they're looking for more quickly. Now these typically only show on navigational queries where somebody's looking for a specific brand rather than information on the web. And right now about 18% of all queries will qualify as navigational queries and most of them will be specifically uh, just for brand names themselves. So how does Google choose these? These are actually generated algorithmically. Um, Bill Slosky, he is a leader in breaking down search patents and he summarized the likely factors to be the following. How many times a page has been accessed? How long people stayed on those pages? Do they scroll down and click a link so they engage with those pages? What type of information uh, is retrieved from those pages? You know, is it a good match? Like are people finding what they're looking for? Uh, the likelihood that someone might make a purchase, so if it's e-commerce, that could have an influence. And other information that might indicate the user engagement. So these are typically pages that Google, again, like they've said themselves, are going to be pages that will move users to the content they're looking for as soon as possible. Now, there's also some other potential factors that could be at play. This is, again comes from, from Bill Slosky. Uh, one could be the anchor text pointing to that page from an internal or external links. So the search queries could also play a role in, in two separate ways. One, it could play a role from uh, what was returned, especially if it's the first result, right? And then the search queries could also play a role when it comes to what page was clicked on within the search results. We can also look at some things like key phrases being extracted from other social sites online. Uh, again, that indicate you know the popularity of a page. So these are all things that, in reading some of the patents Bill Slosky had found, could be contributing factors when it comes to site links. So what can we do? Since this is algorithmically, like there's a lot that we don't really have influence over, but what can we influence? And that's an important thing to understand in SEO or marketing is a, in general, is focus on the things you actually can impact uh, and the things that you can do as opposed to just hoping that you know Google or somebody's going to make an action you want them to make. So since there's no guaranteed optimization that you can make, there are some things that we can do to help improve that, that follow really SEO best practices. The first one is you need to have a clear structure to your website. You need to use relevant internal linkings uh, with good informative anchor text that, that makes sense for the user. Now we talked a little bit about internal linkings in a previous video, it's extremely important and it plays a role here. You also wanna make sure that you allow Google to crawl and index important pages. So use fetch and render to check to make sure that your pages are being rendered and make sure that Google can access all of those pages. And if you've got pages that are not really that important, maybe your privacy policy page or something like that, it's from a search standpoint, not important, use no index. Those don't necessarily need to show up. And while they may get visited a lot, uh, they could show up in your site se uh, site search links, but they're not really going to be ones that are going to be super important as far as moving users through uh, your content. So to help kind of wrap this all up, here's five ways you know that we we can really look at how to improve our site links. We're talking a little bit about what we talked about in the last slide and adding a few more things as well. So so number one, you want to own your brand name. You want to make sure that Google can identify your brand, that it understands it's a brand and that way it knows it's a navigational query and in return can show site links. The second thing is to make sure that irrelevant pages are set to no index. Think privacy policy page, which like we talked about. This doesn't need to be indexed, it doesn't need to be in the search results, so it doesn't have a lot of value, set it to no index. Three, develop a robust internal linking structure. 
internal links they, they reinforce your site structure but they also reinforce certain concepts and popularity of certain concepts make sure you're linking back from parent pages and child pages and really creating that deep linking structure four use semantically related anchor text you know we've talked a lot on this channel about semantics and entities all of those are playing a role here using the right anchor text to link back and forth to related concepts and terms is extremely important you want to use a diversity of semantically related text synonyms uh, throughout your site when you're doing your internal linking and lastly is is building links or making sure that you have backlinks to deep pages now backlinks are still important they may not be as big of a ranking factor as they were a few years ago but it doesn't mean they're irrelevant when you've got deeper pages in your site that might have some decent content on there um, but most or all of your links are pointing to your home page a lot of times those, those other pages are seen as unauthoritative so make sure that you're writing good content that's going to earn links that's going to get links from quality sources and make sure that those deep pages those those pages that are um, really adding value from a content standpoint and a context standpoint are also getting some backlink love so those are five ways just breaking it down that you can you can be proactive in to really help influence your site links to improve the search navigation and improve the click-through rate of your site I just want to give a shout out there's a couple resources here cxl.com um, blog on site links they were a main resource for a lot of this information it's a really good blog on site links I also took stuff from SEO by the sea which was Bill Slosky's site a uh, lots of good in-depth information there and then also the Google web some more answer on site links uh, you can you can find some stuff there as well. So I hope you guys learned something in this video today. If you got any questions about site links, internal links, or other things related to SEO, please comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. And until next time, happy marketing.